Today, as I watch I Sizzle, I get first gray hair, and I am stressed. <sighs> Who is the one, you ask? My brother is Borat. Well, my surrogate brother is Borat. He's a big movie star from 2006. Very nice. Why Hollywood? Well, I have always loved Hollywood and movies and actors. So Ivan must go to Hollywood and become big star like Tom Cruise and Jimmy Carey. I was applied to become a bachelor. Oh, hello. Good morning. My name is Von van der Veen. I am a uh, award-winning scent catalyst from Point Roberts. Um, I am in my 30s, uh, something. And, uh, well, currently I'm staying with my parents. My father's on your need to pay rent. Not right now, I my know, daughter. Mom. I'm recording a tape for The Bachelor. I, know I displayed all my great qualities for The Bachelorette, but I never heard uh, anything back from them. My place. Another time, Ivan try out for America's Got Talent with Heidi Klum, Mel B, Simon Tal, and Howie Mandel. They said they would call me back, but never did. When I arrived today in Hollywood, I arrived to a hostel in the afternoon at a good time. My valuables are very valuable to me. Oh, but this luck. This luck is shit. Oh, I hate this. Shit, shit, shit. I look on Craigslist today for jobs as actors. Tomorrow, I have audition for part in Disney movie. As Cupid Helper number 74. It's a small part direct to internet, but a very helpful part at that. Ivan is very nervous about audition. They said they would call me back. Then I went on more auditions. And more auditions. And more. They still say the same thing. They call me back. And when I returned to hostile, bad fortune struck me. Someone got in my lock locker and stole all my money. I only have a few dollars on me for the night. I must call my parents. Yes, I just picked up the money. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'll be able to stay another few days. Okay. Thank you, mother. Tomorrow I attend Dr. Phil, Price is Right, and let's make a deal as my favorite superhero from Suburbs, Bagman. After the show, I run down Hollywood Boulevard by Jimmy Kimmel. I went to see who was guest. It was Hugh Jackman from Wolverine. I would do one last dance and that would be it in front of Mickey. Ivan would give up on my career as actor in my dreams. It was time to head back home. The plane usually takes two hours, but since it was a bus, it's taking me 27 hours with stops and layovers. I guess I learned a valuable lesson on this trip to Hollywood. Just because I get to gray hair doesn't mean I need to freak out about my life dreams. Because I'll have time until I die to accomplish my dreams, as great actor like Tom Cruise and Jimmy Carey. That is all for now. It's not pleasant. It's not pleasant to feel that warm cloth against your backside. It's not. I gotta go. From now on, your troubles will be on their way. Kind of excited. Uh, you know, I think it's going to be a good week. I'm what you call a, a dear motivational speaker. And my job is to motivate the deer to choose, you know, maybe a better path in life. Dear motivational speaker, it's a big responsibility, you know. But some of the first things you have to do is... Uh, you have to establish, uh, you know, territory. Uh, it's very important that you mark your places and let them know that, you know, there's a mammal on the premise. 
well, you know, certain days. Uh, it looks about 6 p.m. on Sunday. They were here. We know that they like salt, and now we know they like ruffles. You know, I think these deers, I mean, as much grass that they eat, I think that they should be watching their cholesterol levels. I really do. A lot of people ask me if, if dowsing is where you, you, you sit in this electricity into the air is good for the deer and their brains because it might cause cancer. Well, I'm here to assure you that it's completely safe and all natural and organic. These sticks, when I put them together, yep, a few facts I want you to know about deer dowsing and well the first fact is it feels like licking a nine volt battery. Ah. 725 they come along here and they listen to the sound from the neighbor the wheel of fortune on the final spin. Another fascinating fact about the uh, the deer is that they're huge Judge Judy fans. Right when Pat Sajak says, well, I'll give the wheel a final spin, Val's worth nothing, Constant's worth, well, $500, and we'll add a thousand. Well, that's when the deer come around and they, they start to salivate in their mouths. Um, I guess it was nothing. But, I want to show you this area right here, because it's very historical in the history of the deers. Let me show you this. It was right here in 1969 at the first deer coalition. They came in here and they made a decision that <coughs> these glasses right here, they help me see heat in the daytime. And it helps me track the deer. I think I see one right there. I think I see one. But it's in the neighbor's area. Uh, many deers you know, there's been just Bambi, there's Dear John. Wait, I think I see one right now. I see one. Hey, Mr. Deer, I just, I want to, I want to talk to you about, you know, motivation and your life skills and maybe trying something a little different with your life. Hey, hey, come back here, come back here, come back here. Bound to happen with the job, you know, so I just don't want to listen. Hey guys, I'm a uh, motivational deer speaker and... I wanted to talk to you about life change and setting some goals. Uh, what, would you guys like to stop and, and talk for a second? It's free. It won't cost you anything. Well, okay, so have you thought about uh, setting short-term goals? Maybe long-term goals? Alright, well, I'll see you guys later, okay? Well, at least the glasses work. Last night, the mosquitoes and I, we, uh, we had a little bit of a... Well, I've been practicing uh, my skills of reflex. Well, I didn't get them that time. Coolest creatures I've ever heard of and have ever seen. It's called a bat, and it loves them. It loves eating them. It loves to take them down. Like buzzing in your ear all night? Then mosquitoes are probably one of your best friends. I understand why bats like mosquitoes. I go, I find the positive affirmations in the mirror tend to be well suited for the soul. And it's all what you do with that hand. Whether you bluff, pull, hold. I understand that I can't control everything. You're good enough, you're great enough, and you've got this. 
Bloodsuckers Anonymous is what it's called. And apparently, no one around here thinks that the mosquitoes need to go to Bloodsuckers Anonymous. Sometimes you have to take precautionary measures, and you know, it's just really about being smart about it. And you know, just avoiding contact is very important. Very, very important. Well, I just wrote a letter, and I think I figured out a way to solve the mosquito issues uh, in this area. Number one, spay. Number two, neuter. And number three, spay and neuter. <clears throat> Apparently, the deer have hired the mosquitoes uh, to get me out of this place. Uh, apparently the deer don't like my motivational speaking. So now that we know this information, we'll just have to readjust a little bit. You know, get them motivated. Well, on that night in 1969, they took this pan right here, which is a symbol of their freedom. Because on that night, they settled a peace treaty. The deer gave this to the mosquito. And as you can see, this is the mosquito's little, little beak right here as a symbol, uh, you know, to keep the peace. Their meal of choice was grass, maple leaves, and you can imagine how good that would taste. They put a little water in there, and I think they used some cooking wine as well. And, uh, yeah, made for a pretty good evening. This is where, in 2000, the Deers had their first 4th of July parade. I guess it would have been about 1955. Uh, the deer had had their first uh, mini teepees, and the first one went in, and then after the second one, a third one popped up, and then you can imagine a fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and you just bypass eight, nine, and ten, and you just get right to eleven. And they would actually, like a raccoon, or like Zorro, they would have a little teeny mask and a briefcase to the side, and they'd. They'd go in and they'd steal all the valuables out of these little mini TPs that the deer had been using. Well, this didn't sit well with the community, and the community ruled that if these briefcase bandits ever came back, they would be forced to jump off this cliff right here into nothingness. I'm just simply frustrated. My journal is, well, the deer decided to eat it. Well, I, I can help you. I can help you change your life. All right. Yeah, yeah. I'll call you later, okay? I'll call you. Maybe I've been a little too forceful with the deer. Eventually, it pays off. But you just gotta be patient and persistent. We just have to let the deer be who they're gonna be. And I think at the end of the day, maybe I need to take care of my own life purpose. Stop pushing it on the deer. You know, maybe they got their own definitive life purpose figured out, so I should just let them be happy. Just let them be who they are. <sighs> Message. Famous 
Walter T. Agnes, and this is the story of the ghost of the Kimmel Toe. Now remember this is a car, this is just a reenactment right here. So what had happened is, the car was parked on a slant on a hill, so Kimmel Toe had to, had to get up out the seat the door up but as he was pushing the door up the seat was so low to the ground that he had to try to elevate himself up on a hill and it just became too much and Mr. Spock the, the second in command well he didn't make it and I'll show you here real quick you can see the bigger toe took the brunt that, that camel toe just didn't make it. Oh, tell me. The toe is right next to the big toe. And what oh, I call the big toe, I guess would be an example is Star Trek. And oh, the big why. toe would be Captain Kirk. And the one next in, in command, which would be just the, next to the, the Captain Kirk, would be Spock. Um, it's been about three years. Uh, of sleepless nights uh, the camel toe just keeps haunting me up here I like to call this the graveyard of lanterns the camel toe is not eating every one of these out just over here I used to have a Douglas fir but I took it out because it was ugly and Woody Woodpecker and all his little friends will come out here and just beat their heads to death on that Douglas fir. It really it wasn't pretty. But who cares about that anyways? Camel toe? Are you out here? Camel toe? Camel toe. Did you take my pen? I was walking home the other day from the village market and well 19 cars had passed and one stopped and offered me a ride and a few days earlier I had counted how many cars and it it turned out to be 19 so I called it the 19 camel toes and you stick it out and eventually, on that 19th camel toe, somebody will stop for you. I was driving the other day and the camel toe came out of nowhere and used this blackberry bush here and just slapped me in the face. It didn't feel good. It didn't feel good at all. Camel toe really likes German music. So, well, <laughs> well, if the camel toe was Christian, he never read the commandment about loving thy neighbor. That's for sure. No, Ma. Well, if you're wondering why I'm wearing glasses, it's because the camel toe gave me two black eyes. And frankly, I'm a little embarrassed to show my black eyes from the camel toe. Well, the thing that really irks me about the camel toe is that he borrows my iPod and he cracked the screen on my iPod. So, I just wish he would respect my things. Well, gosh, camel toe, you don't think I, I really think that way about you, do you? Well, to be perfectly honest, there was one night where I felt like I could have, I could have saved the camel toe, but it just wasn't meant to be. All right, camel toe, you listen to me. We're gonna save you, little guy. Clear. Come on, camel toe. Come on, clear. Come on, camel toe. 
Kim Hotel. Kim Hotel, Kim Hotel, Kim Hotel. Hmm, Kim Hotel. Kim Hotel. Kim Hotel. Well, you know, I think it's like with anything else in life. But. Camel toe? Camel toe, is that you? Well, I think it's simple as pie. I think the only, the only reason those two ever met and got married was to teach each other about divorce. Camel toe? Camel toe, is that you? Camel toe. Camel toe. Camel toe. Camel toe. Is you? Camel toe. Is that you? Camel toe. Camel toe. Camel toe. Camel toe, is that you? You doing that to the computer, camel toe? Well, shoot. I guess we all had to learn a simple lesson. I was wrong in not thinking everything out and just wanting to forget about how great the past really is and how we have to respect it and leave it how we found it if not better well i guess i just that's it How did I get here? Who am I? I'm my sizzle. And I guess I got sick of the suburbs, internet, phone, and people. I guess I just felt like escaping. You know, hear my own thoughts, enjoy the silence. And yeah, I needed to replace this flat tire on this bike. Well, I'm just putting the final touches. Uh getting moved in here from, uh, you know, the suburbs, and uh, it's nice, you know, it's a little more uh, peaceful, and that's kind of what I'm looking for, so, well, I'm just getting moved in, and I gotta say, you know, it's it's nice to be out here on the islands, and, you know, it's nice to have a little peace and quiet. I mean, sure, it doesn't have indoor plumbing, and, you know, you gotta use an outhouse to go to the bathroom, but, I don't know. Makes me feel like I'm doing my part in the world. Yeah, there's just something nice about listening to your own thoughts and, you know, I enjoy simple things. I love me a good cup of coffee, but I loved organic black coffee.
if I could. It was a good first day, and now to sleep. Oh my gosh, the neighbors are sea lions. What? I didn't sleep that night. But they finally went to bed after a night of partying, 6 a.m. Well, I wrote the sea lions a letter and signed, sealed, and delivered it. I definitely say I, I wasn't the most social kid. Uh, you see, I didn't really know that when I didn't look somebody in the eye, it meant that I didn't care. You know, some days I just don't feel like listening. And the organic coffee was brewed to warm the soul. Whew, the temperature dropped. Alrighty, well, I was tired and I needed to sleep and rest my body. They were relentless and loved to bark. Yeah, I was losing it. I hated those sea lions and their late night parties. Well, it's been a pretty rough week. Um, I haven't really been able to concentrate because of the sea lions and I have been. I had not slept very good this whole last week. I didn't know what to do. I couldn't hear myself think or talk. I couldn't even write. They were talking over me, barking. Because I used to be able to beat the top score in Nature Park. But since the sea lions have been so noisy, well, I just been trying to do my daily routine, right? But oh well, right? I mean, life could be worse, I guess. Come on. Well, I guess in life, it's really about not sweating the small stuff. Well, what can I do? And they returned the letter I wrote them. Be a little frustrating. So, I wrote out my negative feelings and burnt them in a pit. Well, if the sea lions don't want to communicate with me, I guess I'll just write out my feelings and burn them. I don't know. There's just something freeing about burning your thoughts that have just been bothering you all day. very free.
next day, I went for a ride away from the cabin. I needed some time away. You know, get away from the sea lions. Nasty little creatures. Oh well. Well, the ride was good, and I felt renewed, but I also felt really sore. Yeah, well, it's definitely not Hawaii in November, I'll tell you that. Um, cold? I'd say seven layers is probably the best way to say it's cold. The next day, I needed to understand the sea lions. I came to a conclusion. And I had to know why they partied so much. Why they made that hideous noise. Since I didn't have the internet or a computer, I rode to the local public library. and it all makes sense. They were just, that's just who they were. You know what? I should respect that this is their home before mine. Well, I guess what I learned from the sea lions is to be yourself. Stop taking orders from people who just got here. Keep the party going. And yes, we all have to live together and put up with each other's annoyances. But I do think it is possible to coexist with the sea lions. All right. Well, until next time, adios. This is I Sizzle. Well, my name is Walter. T. Agnes the third, and I am a professional deer goal uh, hunter. Well, I guess you could say that the, the deer goal's favorite food is, uh, is poppies. Um, well, what a deer goal is, is it's two parts eagle, three parts deer, and a hint of otter. You look up at the clouds, you think that way. And all I see is a deer go. Well, my first encounter with a deer go down here at Watt Mow in Bay. I was on the beach doing my yoga, and there he was. You can claim to have seen a deer go, but we know that's just not true. I have to be careful not to scare them. <laughs> That's the deer go call. There's one. These deer goals are different. They're they're cayenne pepper resistant. They like the hot stuff. If we could come to an agreement, the deer goal and I. It would be that he stops stealing my hot sauce and putting them on my poppies that are in a gated garden. The deer go flaps its eagle wings in and over the fence to the poppies. And he likes to flap his wings the two parts 
eagle is their claws. Because how could they get inside and twist the lid off the hot sauce? I like an almond biscotti. I like to dip it in the skim milk. And then have it come up for air. And you can see some of the hunters tried to burn down part of the island to get all the deer go. Some say that the deer go is prehistoric. They really like Salal booby traps. The uh, deer go family could enjoy on their soft hooves. They like to put roadblocks. I have put deer hooves in the front, but then I realized that they need claws in order to open hot sauce. Then the deer go, it was the 4th of July, 1974. 1974 of July, there was a deer go on that island back there. You, you can see right here that the tree is pushed over. The tree is pushed over to an X. In 1993, a deer girl got upset and created a crossing just simply for the deer girl to go by without any RIP. To a deer girl that had passed, and I paid tribute with some poppies. Well, I had a dream once with a deer girl in it, and in the dream, the deer girl could talk, and the deer girl would always say, I want my poppies and hot sauce. I'm so, I'm so fumed right now. My sunglasses have fog on them. Do you see this tree right here? 
Yeah. There's no Minneapolis because of the Jimmy Deer Fallon. And it's really irks me. Aw, oh, poo. Well, what a Jimmy Deer Fallon is, is three parts deer, two parts Fallon, with a hint of Jimmy. Now, if you look real closely, you can see the Jimmy Deer Fallon tracks. Now, this is when he was trying to run and hop over the electric fence. And you can see he took a little bit of a skid after I took the broom and tried to hit him in the butt with it. Jimmy Deer Fallon! Take that! Take that! The Jimmy Deer Fallon loves to just put his little neck through it and then figure out a way to barge through. Ha! Yeah! Well, if you're wondering why I'm wearing glasses, it's because I got in a scuffle with the Jimmy Deer Fallon. And he gave me a black eye. Semicolon. Mike Tyson. Stop. Well, as Bob Dylan would say, the times they are changing for this Jimmy Deer Fallon. I've tried to set out a neck. Well, of course I yelled at it. I said, Jimmy Deer Fallon, get out of my garden and stop eating my many apples and organic cheese. Well, sometimes in life, you have to give and take with your neighbors. And right now, I'm doing the giving. How do you like them apples? Hi, my name's Ice Sizzle. I've been growing my beard out for three months now. It's the first time in seven years I've let my hair grow out. I usually keep it shaved. I found out about the World Beard Championships about one month ago. You know, I feel in today's society, the beard is perceived as you're either homeless, a terrorist, or just plain scary. That's why I'm about to board a plane from Portland, Oregon to Las Vegas to help change the perception of the beard. And yes, having a full beard and trying to eat chicken wings with blue cheese dipping sauce, it is a challenge all in itself. The water in Las Vegas, city water. well, <laughs> it's not very good. You're born into the world in a matter of seconds, and before you know it, you're all grown up. And if you're a guy, you might lose your hair, just like I did. I tried every baseball cap to cover up my balding. Going bald at 22, I'll admit, it wasn't easy. I was shy, awkward, and had low self-confidence in myself about balding. Let's just say, I didn't know how to take a joke when people teased me. But over time, I had to learn, it's not the hair on the top of your head that makes you a man. It's what's inside that counts. So once I understood that, my life, it took on a whole new meaning. Sure, I shaved the top of my head, but without self-confidence, it doesn't matter what you look like. So I made the choice to grow out my hair. All of it. And now, I have a beard. A big one. My mom says I look like my dad at the same age. Mm, you decide.
Now, with a full beard, I feel like I'm ready to take on the world, or at least compete in a World Beard Championship. I feel like I have a really good chance, but you never know how the universe could turn on us really fast. Garibaldi was an Italian general and politician. He's considered as Italy's father of the fatherland. Many of the intellectuals of his time showered Garibaldi with admiration. Garibaldi was born on July 4th, 1807, in Nice, France. Garibaldi is known for the unification of Italy. And at the outbreak of the American Civil War, Garibaldi offered his services to President Lincoln. Garibaldi wrote a letter to Lincoln, and to paraphrase, Lincoln, you'll be known as the Great Emancipator. It'll be a greater title than any crown could be, and definitely greater than any mundane treasure. Garibaldi, 1861. I can say without a doubt, I've never felt so at home in all my life. All the states of the United States and the rest of the world grabbed a flag and all lined up to be announced to represent their state and country. So the championships, they run all day. They start at noon and go until the sun goes down. And that's when the Garibaldi competition begins. What number are you? Five. I'm a big believer in visualizing your victory and taking deep breaths before you get up on a stage with crowds of hundreds and hundreds of people watching. Number five, I fizzle Portland, Oregon. The semi-finalists from this group, moving on to the next round, number two. I didn't even get a point. Not one. <sighs> My philosophy is, if you never try, you never lose. Even though I lost, I'm okay with that. Because if you never compete, you can never win. But you have to have the confidence to take that chance every time. <laughs> 